Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Welcome to another time of study around the Word of God. I guess in some cases we can call this morning devotion, praise God, because this is the time that we're devoting ourselves over to the Word of God, amen, to just uh, declare the things of God, amen. So again, I want to welcome Diane, praise God, my niece is on, is on here, praise God, welcome this morning, good having you with us this morning, praise God, and we're just going to take about the first one minute to just welcome everybody as they're coming on, but I'll tell you what, this is the day the Lord has made. And because this is the day he made, we rejoice and glad in it. Welcome Frankie, praise God, this morning. Glory to God. Amen. It's a great day. Melva, praise God. Welcome this morning as we get into the word of God today. Amen. The Lord is good. Kevin, Pastor Kevin, praise God. Welcome this morning. Good having you with us this morning. The Lord is faithful. Amen. Ruby, welcome this morning. Good having you with us. We got a great study this morning. Praise God. God got some great things in store. Amen. Well, you know, every day, not just today, every day, praise God. The Bible said God's mercies are new every morning. Bless you, Mary. Welcome this morning. Good having you with us again, as always. Praise God. And now I want to personally welcome all those also that are watching us by YouTube. Praise God. You that come on YouTube, God bless you today. Welcome, 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 welcome. I see, praise God, one of my spiritual sons from out of Nigeria is on. Praise God. Welcome. Uh, uh, oh, Sam, mean, I can't think about your name, but peace, I see the word peace on that, God bless you all from Nigeria, uh, uh, Teresa, praise God, welcome this morning, Montoya, welcome this morning, good to have you all with us, praise God, the Lord is faithful, and again, we want to just welcome all those on YouTube also, welcome to you, also listen to us by YouTube, thank God for all the wonderful mediums that God has for us to get the word of God out, amen, we ready to get into the word of God? Go to your Bibles, to the book of Proverbs. We left off there yesterday. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 4. And we began talking to you about a particular, a special area that can really determine uh, how your life is going to turn out. I mean, this is one of the things that for me, it, 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 you know, one of the principles that I had to incorporate in my life after coming away from about 15 years of a small church growth, no productivity, finances way down and things like that. But this is one of the principles I had to put into my life so that God could trust me with more. And so I want you to go again to the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 4. And it says this, He becometh poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Now if you've not been with us for the last few days, I would encourage you to go back to possibly when we started talking about this on, on, on Monday. And you'll kind of be able to catch up with us and things like that as far as, you know, what diligence is, what it means to be poor and things like that. And this way you'll get, I, I, I might have started on that Friday, I believe it was. But whenever I started on, you might go back to where I, for, on, on, here on Facebook and go back to the, the lessons that I already taught on this and you'll see what we're talking about today. Because today, cause we, we talked about what it means to become poor we said that the word become poor means that uh, there's something that started you to become poor. What, 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 it was something that poor, you were not born poor. It said he becometh poor. That means poverty is a result. Uh, you know, poverty is an effect. It is not a cause. You know, you can't say, well, I was born poor. That's why I'm, no, no. Poverty is an effect. Yeah, you know, it says he, he becometh poor. So, uh, and we said the word poor means to lack, to be inefficient, to not have enough. And we said that poverty really is, uh, you, you know, uh, if you, maybe you might have two cars, maybe you might have a no, nice house, but are you able to feel, fulfill the dream that you have? Are you able to fulfill the vision that God has given you at the level God told you to do it? Are you farming? Then that means you're still in poverty. Poverty means not having enough. To fulfill the dream, the vision. In other words, you're in ministry and you don't have enough money coming in to, to, to get the kind of building you really need. To be able to get the carpet uh, uh, done and, and all the things you may need uh, as, as a pastor or a minister or a, a five-fold ministry gift. Amen. You don't have enough. Or you may be in business and you want to expand your business. You need more products and things like that. More money to invest and you don't have enough for that. For us, in other words... Uh, prosperity or and uh, we're talking about uh, uh, being poor is not having enough and and here it says we become poor uh, if I'm, so in other words 
a poverty is not an cause. It is an effect. Amen. So we got to recognize what caused that. And then it says it, he become a poor that deals with a slack hand. And we talked about what a slack hand was. <laughs> Man, all that slack in our lives. We got we talk about getting that slack out of our lives and stuff like that. Amen. Sometimes we got we to get the slack jerked out of our lives so that we can get rid of that poverty spirit on our lives. Amen. That poverty spirit on our business. That poverty spirit off of our ministries. That poverty spirit off of my, my finances to be able to do things that I really want to do at the level I want to do it. At, uh, uh, you know, the way God has told me. It needs to get done. So we said that, that he becoming poor, that deal with the slack hand. Then we, we start talking about the hand of the diligent. And we begin to define the word diligent. What, the, what does the word diligent mean? Amen. And we talked about that the word diligent actually means, it comes from the word meaning sharp. Uh, and it talks about peeling off that which is superficial. And like, a, like we said that you peel, a, you peel the holes off of a banana and you eat the inside. Well, that, well that's what I'm talking about. You have to peel off trim off everything in your life that's that's causing poverty to come and sometimes that's information your family the wrong information wrong associations raw uh, people that you hang out with wrong observation people that you look to as ministers amen and, and 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 not learning how to delete people in your life people things and situations that's causing you to be poor like this like one man said the way you the way you stay poor is to keep doing what poor people do. Amen. The way you get rich is to do what rich people do. Amen. And so here it says here, the hand of the diligent shall be made rich. So you gotta begin to understand that rich also is a cause. It's, it rich also is an effect. It is not a cause. People say, well, you're able to do what you do because you are born rich. No, rich is not a cause. Rich is a effect. That means maybe you might got you may have gotten it by inheritance, but somebody paid the cost. Somebody paid the cost to, to becoming rich. Are you following? Because here it says he the hand of the diligent make it rich. That means rich is a process. It's something you're doing that's causing you to become what? Rich. Are you following? So rich also is not a cause. In other words, you didn't you, you don't get rich by being born rich. You it, it said it make it rich. Are you following? So people that are rich, there's certain habits they have. There's certain things that they do to get the riches in their lives. And there's certain things that poor people do uh, to get poor part of life. Here at Proverbs again, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4. He becometh poor. Not he was born poor. He becometh poor. <laughs> Amen. Be, uh, because he deals with a what? A slack hand. But then it said, but the hand of the diligent. That's racing around. Make it rich. That means rich also is a process. That people that are rich, it's things they do to become rich. Are you following? So, and, and, and let's look at that for a moment. Because we're going to look at this, you know, the benefits now of walking in diligence. And we can see that that word rich, we're going we're gonna to talk about the word rich today. Amen. Because somebody said, that person's rich. Are they? Are they? Do they really have enough to do what God's called them to do? Because you see them, maybe because they may have two cars, because they have a house to live in. Are they really rich? Are they really fulfilling God's purpose for their lives? Do they have enough to fulfill the dream that God put in their heart? Or have they just settled for the two cars in the house? Because that's, you know, because that's all their job can do. But the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, and above all you can ask or think according to the power working inside of you. So, so rich is not just having a house and a car and getting all your bills paid. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. But rich really is, have you tapped into the dream that God has for your life? Have you, have you, or, or have you let go of the dream and become satisfied with the status quo? Are you following? No. God says, uh, God told Jeremiah, Je Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of her womb, I sanctified you, I ordained you're going to be a prophet to the nations, not just have a nice car and a nice home, which I love that you, I praise God for all that, amen. But he said, I've called you to be, have a, you'll be a prophet to the nations. That means God's got a bigger dream than what you have seen in your life. And, and so we're talking about becoming rich so that we can have everything that God has us to have to be able to do the purpose of God that he has for us at the level he wants us to do it. Are you following that today? So, so the, word, the word then, rich. Let's look at the word rich. Now, this is coming out of a study of the Hebrew meaning for the word rich 
and other dictionary words in that context, okay? The word rich actually means wealth. That's one definition that means wealth. I think I think I think might be the message Bible might one of those it says that that the word rich means wealth. Now it, it also means that which is beautiful to the eye. Uh, so what it's saying is that you know maybe uh, uh, you have a church that uh, uh, that you know you have a building but it ain't beautiful to the eye. You don't have enough money to really make it look like you want to make it. Are you following me? You may have some cameras in your, in your TV ministry, but you know, but they're real poor, broken down. You may have uh, a nice business, but you're not operating the business at the level you want to operate. But it says that the word rich also means that which is beautiful to the eye. In other words, God wants you to look good. He wants your ministry to look good. He wants your home to look good. He wants, he wants to make you rich so that everything you have uh, 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 in ministry, on your business, or on your home, it, uh, your car, your drive. He wants all of it to become beautiful to the eye. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Can you see that today? And it also means this. It comes from the word mean ornament or ornamentation. Like a, like a lady, many times when she's dressed, she have a beautiful dress on. And sometimes the different ornaments she put on her ears, the necklace she put on there, you know, the, what she put on her hand, the ring she have. All of those are called ornaments. All those are ornaments. And what, and what an ornament does, it renders things more beautiful to the eye. You can even have sometimes a, a normal dress. But when you, put the, when you ornament yourself, are you following me? With some makeup, glory to God. You ornament yourself with some nice earrings. You ornament yourself with a nice and nice jewelry. It just, it just makes you more beautiful to the eye. And that's what it's talking about there when it says that that, he, that, that, it, you, that the hand of the dunes should be made rich. There's a look that you're able to do things at the level God wants you to do it. Are you following me? You ain't got to be riding, driving that car that you don't know if going to make it to church or not. Or don't even have a car. Are you following me? No, you'll be able to have the kind of car that's beautiful to the eye, not breaking down, not using a quarter oil every mile. <laughs> I know about all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's terrible. When you're not when you're not rich, when you don't have enough to do what God wants you to do, Amen. At the level God wants you to do it, you can you, you know your family not the level God wants you to do it. Uh, your ministry at the level God wants you to do it. Your business at the level God wants you to do it. The way you dress, the way you conduct yourselves, Amen. At the level, and that's what it's talking about. Rich, it's talking about rich there, and it also means listen now. It means it's, it's, it's that which serves, that which serves to decorate. And give additional beauty means a woman, you know, uh, without being, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm just using a woman for instance. This can be anything, but a woman many times, you know, uh, 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 you know, she can be plain, but she put a little makeup on, glory to God, some earrings on, a necklace on. You follow me? It gives. She's already a beautiful woman. I mean, she can be beautiful, with nice skin and everything. Praise God, beautiful already inside out. But when she ornament herself. It gives what? Additional beauty. You know, I, I bought a car one time, and one of my employees, I had him go pick up the car, and I told him, we're going to just put it in the garage. And they said, Pastor, that's a brand new car you put in the garage? I said, yes. I said, I ain't going to drive that thing until I get me some rims on it. <laughs> you follow me? I love rims. I mean, I love, love rims. I said, I ain't no, I, you know, this is back years ago, I had the, the PT Cruiser. It was a nice, black, beautiful, beautiful little car. Brand new car. But I said, I'm not going to drive it until I get my rims. Because I, I wanted that, I wanted to adorn it. I wanted to enrich it. Are uh, you know, following me? And so I had like a little tire put on the back of it. You know what I mean? And then I had a, 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 a I've got me some not a different, different size tires and got me some rims on it. And see, the car was the car, but not all of that. But what I did, I enriched it. I gave, I gave additional beauty to it. And then I went and, and, and made my dashboard with the little wood look and things like that. It didn't come like that. I, I gave additional beauty to it. Are you following? So that's what that's what God is saying. Is that the, the the hand of the diligent make it rich? He will add to you what all you already have. And God said, I want you to be the very best. I want you to look the best. I want you to have the best. I want you to drive the best. Praise God. I want your ministry to look the best. I want your church to look the best. I want your business to look the best. Your kids. I want everybody to be their very best. And that's why He said the hand of the diligent will make you rich. Now, that's number one. 
Number number uh, uh, and also means this. It means to embellish. We talk about that. It means, that's what we talking about. It means to embellish and things like that. So number two, number two, the word diligent, uh, 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 the soul of the diligent. What we talking about? The benefits of being diligent. Uh, number two is the soul of the diligent. The Bible says should be made fat. Glory to God. You ever the young people always talk about? Man, that's fat, man. That's fat, man. That's really fat. Only they still say that. This is years ago. Everything was fat. Amen. But they would spell P H A T. But look, look in the book of Proverbs, chapter number thirteen and verse number four. Proverbs thirteen and verse number four. And this is point number two that uh, that the hand of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs thirteen four says the soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. <laughs> Glory to God. That means that the soul of a sluggard, a lazy man that sit around doing nothing, that you know, that's that's got a lot of slack in their life, they said they desire more, but they don't have the, the, but it comes to nothing. Because they're they're lazy, they're slothful. Are you following? So therefore that all they can do is sit around desiring more or or criticize people that that have more. And you know, you know what they're, they're what you call haters. Amen. They're desiring the same thing, but they don't want to put the work in. They don't want to make the change. They don't want to become diligent in their lifestyle. They want to stay lazy. They want to stay slothful. They want to keep all that slack in their lives. And it says they desire but don't have nothing. All they have is the gift of running their mouth and coming to uh, 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 uncontrolled conclusions. Uh, you're jumping to conclusions. But I'm telling you, it says, but the soul. Of the diligent shall be made fat. Glory to God. Now let me give it, let me de, let me define that word fat for you. Okay, this is in the Hebrew word because the Hebrew language when they spoke they spoke in pictures. In other words, they had a picture in their mind when they used different words. So the words were supposed to create pictures in their minds to, to a, a, as a way of demonstrating what they were talking about. So this word fat actually means rich. You look it up; it means rich. It means abundantly supplied. It means prosperous. It means having something to show for your life. It means to be completely satisfied. It means to be well fed. Glory to God. Can you see that? That's what the word, when it said fat, in the Hebrews, when, 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 they, when they heard that word fat, uh, uh, the shall be made fat, this is the picture that that word created in their minds. It means that the, that the soul of the digital we made fat, it means we, we, it'll make us rich. It'll bring us into a place of being abundantly supplied, prosperous. It means it'll bring us to a place to have something to show for our lives. It's nothing worse than working all your life and have nothing to show for your, your labor. Amen? It means you, it, you'll bring it to a place of being completely satisfied and well fed. Isn't that beautiful? And it says here uh, that God says, that's what I want for your life. Now, I want you to, I'm going to give you another scripture on that because it'll show you what, what we're talking about here. And, and, and if you go with me to the book of Luke, chapter number 15 and verse number 22. And we're going to show about the story about the prodigal son who was living fat. <laughs> Glory to God. He was living in abundance. He was living up in, a, in, a, in a state of being abundantly supplied. Prosperity, amen. C completely satisfied, but he got in his mind. The devil tricked him into into going out and, and, and what we would call backsliding, going out into the world trying to find something that he already had at home. And that happens to a lot of kids sometimes. They got everything they need at home. They want to go out there and in the world and try to discover them own selves. So he went out there, began to party, and began to you know. Uh, anytime you got money, you draw friends that ain't got no money. They want to spend yours. <laughs> Amen. He had all the people. But the Bible says that when his money was gone, all his friends left. But they do that when you ain't got no money no more. I mean, we used to, you know, you know when you got money, it attracts a whole lot of people. When you ain't got no money, you find who your real friends are. But it says he found himself living in the pig pen. And then he began to discover that his father was fat. <laughs> Glory to God. His father's house was abundantly supplied. His father's house was prosperous. 
his and when he lived in his father's house, he was com he was in a state of being com completely satisfied. He was well fed. He began to start thinking, how many even servants of my fathers have food to eat? I'm sitting here in this pig pen, and I'm sitting here, uh, uh, you know, uh, hungry. I'm sitting here in lack. I'm sitting here in poverty. I'm sitting here with nothing to show for my life, even though I'm a child of a rich man. He says, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell my father, I, if, you, if so, I'll just let me be one of your hired servants, one of your hired servants. And he says, I'm going to go back. But the Bible says, when his father saw him afar off, glory to God. That's what God has said to you today and to me today. He's seen the poverty and the lack and the insufficiency. He saw how many of us living under the spirit of poverty in our lives. And he said, I see my children desiring to come back. I see my children understanding that they, even though they're, they're, they belong to me, they've been in a place like the hog pen. And they're, they're suffering with lack. Uh, they're, son, they're suffering from a lack of abundance in their lives. They're suffering from a lack of prosperity. They're suffering from a lack of something to show for who they are, really are. They're not completely satisfied anymore. No they're hungry. They're in poverty. But the Bible says, when he said, I'm going to come back to my father's house. And I want to tell you today, the father's waiting on you. The Bible said the father ran. Glory to God. The father ran and grabbed his son and kissed his son. Po prosperity kissing poverty. And whenever prosperity kisses poverty, the poverty can't be a pole no more. <laughs> Glory to God. When God's prosperity, when God's fatness kisses your poverty, the, you can't stay poor no more. Pole no more. So the father kissed him. And he came back and he brought his son back home again. That's what God is saying to you and me. I'm bringing you back home. You're heirs of God. You're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You're the seed of Abraham. You're an heir of God, joint heir with Jesus Christ. And because you're a seed of Abraham, you are also heirs to the promise of God. When I told Abraham, I will bless you. I'll make you a blessing. You're going to be the head and not the tail, Abraham. And God is seeing his children now. That has been, his, the churches have been all broke down. Five different colors of carpet on it. Dirty. You know, driving cars that, they, that, that, the, that, they, that they're paying 40, 30 or 40% interest on. Uh, houses that they, don't, that they can't afford to buy their own house. God said, I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my body and I'm going to get them. I'm going to seek and save my children that are lost in lack and in poverty and insufficiency. I want to bring them into the place uh, of wealth and riches. And so the Bible says God, the, the Father went and got him. And then in Luke chapter 15 and verse 22, look at what he said when he got his son back home. Verse 22 said, but the Father said to the servants, glory to God, bring forth, this is Luke 15, 22, bring forth the best robe. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to get my son back fat again. I'm getting him back fat again. Bring back, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand to identify covenant with his dad. And put some shoes back on his feet. Because the place where he's on now is holy ground. He's going to begin to walk in, in a, in a, on a, at another level of life with my wealth. Robe with the best, wearing the best, driving the best, living in the best, ministry, church, business, looks like the best, fully ornamented, where people that know that that's the seed of Almighty God. And it says, put a ring on his feet. And then notice what he says in verse 123, verse 23, and bring forth the fatted calf, glory to God, the fatted calf. Not the weak one, the fatted one, and, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for verse 24, for this my son, glory to God, my children. Remember what Jesus said about Abraham, I mean, about the woman, 
about all for 18 years, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this bondage in Jesus' name? Glory to God. You are children of Abraham. You're the seed of Abraham. It's time to be loose from poverty, loose from insufficiency, loose from being poor. And, and he said, for this is my son. This is my daughter that was dead. That means when you're in poverty, you're in lack, you're in insufficiency, and you're living uh, uh, below your privileges of being on your heavenly father. He says, it's like being dead, dead to the things that your father has for you. He said, but this is my son again. That was dead, but is alive again. Hallelujah. And he was lost. And that's what's happening. Many church people today, they're just lost. They're just lost. That's why they're accepting poverty. They're accepting insufficiency. They're, they're accepting lack. But God said they've been lost. But now they're found. And God, I'm telling you, I bring a word to you today. Glory to God. That Jesus is seeking the lost. And he's bringing his people back. And cause them to be found again. Glory to God. And he says it's time to be merry. It's time to put the ring, the best robe back on you again. It's time for you to wear the best. It's time for you to live in the best. It's time for you to drive the best. It's time for you to have the best church. I mean, not in competition with nobody else, but because you are a child of God. Time for you to have the best business, praise God, the most prosperous. He said begin to be merry. Now, when, when he called for the fatty calf, when he called for the fatty calf there, bring a fatty calf. Again, the Hebrews understood a picture when he said the fatty calf. The fatty calf meant this. It was considered the best and the healthiest animals. He's saying, bring forth the fatty calf. I want my children to begin to eat the best and the most healthiest. I want them to live the best. I want them to be the most healthiest. Are you following me? And, and so that when that word fat that was there, it, uh, it, the concept... Uh, associated fatness there with prosperity. Amen. So when he said bring for the fatty calf, he referring to bring my children back to the best. The word fat. We said the scripture mean and, and, and Proverbs said that he that walks in goodness should be made fat. And that's what I'm declaring of your life today in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring that in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be made fat. As you move into diligence in your life and you remove all the slackness out of your life and you begin to deal with a you begin to walk in diligence in your life. Then he said that from this point on, the father God is bringing you to a place of wealth that belongs to you. He's bringing you a place of, 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 enough, of more than enough to fulfill the dream that's in your heart, the vision that you have at the level that he wants you to have it. No more eating in the pig pen. No more have to look and see what other people have and that you don't have but you're going to be able to have things at the level that god wants you to have it amen praise god churches your church gonna be the best church you're, you're gonna have the, you're gonna be the, you're gonna have the best marriage you're gonna have your children gonna be the best children you, you uh, amen uh, bible said my children should be taught of god and grace should be the peace of my children. So you're going to have great children. Praise God. Great grandchildren. Glory to God. And you're going to be able to. The Bible said the wealth of the wicked is stored for the just. And the Bible said the, that, the, that the just. Amen. Lays up an inheritance for their children. You have enough to build. To leave an inheritance for your children. Amen. Instead of bills. Praise God. Because that's why God wants you and me. To move out of slack. And laziness. And, and stop doing things that poor people do. And start doing things rich people do. Because God says. That, the, that he becometh poor. That deal with a slack hand. He said, but the hand of the diligent will make you rich. Well, praise God. This has been a great day today. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 I got more for it, man. It's going to get better and better. You know, you don't want to miss any of these days. Praise God. Because uh, tomorrow I got another. I'm going to take off from this point tomorrow. And we're going to move on and get some things in place. Praise God. This is the week of diligence today. And I'm, I'm thanking God for all you that have been on. Again, I want to thank God for you that are on Facebook, you that are watching by YouTube. Praise God. I want to thank God for all of you. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I want to welcome you again, as I say every morning, many of you that watch me every morning. If this has been a blessing to you, if, if, if what I'm teaching you is connecting with you, then I want to invite you to be my partner. Amen. To, to partner with me in getting this gospel out. You know, it requires, on my part, it requires a lot of study, a lot of time that I spend to bring the word to you in a, in a very teachable, learnable level. Are you following me? And so the Bible says that 
if I preach the gospel to you, then my job is to live on the gospel that I preach. If my life is bringing fruit in your life, then you ought to take a, you know, uh, you know, uh, take a little bit of, that, a bit of that as a result of me benefiting your life, what God has given me to benefit your life, and, and, and sow a seed. You know, become my partner. And then said, you know what? I believe in what the Apostle Craig is doing. It's really blessing my life. And I want to partner with him in making this thing happen. All you're going to do at the top of the page there, there is a link uh, that, that, that says partner link. It's also a link where there's my cash out there. All you got to do is so that. I know people say, well, he's out the money. Let me tell you something. I'm not out the money. But I, but I do have a family to support. Somebody say amen. So I'm not, I'm not putting that out. I'm not only want to talk about that at all as far as, you know, me after your money. I'm not, if, you, if that's what you think, you know, just, you just go on and keep just listening until you get things changed in your life. But for you that believe and, and, and you, witness, you witness in your heart that I'm a man of God and you can tell your spirit lets you know that, that Apostle Craig is, is ministering to me. My life is being blessed as a result of that. Partner with me. Sow a seed. The Bible says, that when a person teaches you, then you should also you know, minister to them financially. Amen. So I'm, I'm not. So just know, you know, this is no requirement. But if you if you believe it's been a blessing to you, become my partner and help me keep getting this out. If you'll notice on, on here every day, there's people from all throughout America, you know, America and and the world listening to me every morning, and you will be a part of me, uh, 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 getting that gospel out and partner with me. Whatever amount God put in your heart, amen, uh, and, and you just click that link, it'll take you to a link you can sow, or you can do the cash out, you can give there, praise God, And but I set myself in agreement with you as a man of God, amen, that, that the seed that you sow is being put, sown on good ground, and I believe God, as you sow an, an, an offering, that you'll see God move in your life. No, you can't buy a miracle, but I guarantee you, as you sow, you'll see God move in your life, and Luke 6.38 says, give, and it shall be given to you again, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So I set myself in agreement with you for the overflowing richness of God's blessings on your life because of your diligence. We love you very much. Again, share this with your friends on Facebook. Share this. If, you, if you're getting the link, I take, click this link. You'll take the link, copy the link, and text it to your friends. That's how you do it. Just take the link. That I send you. If, if, if I don't have your, your your cell number, then maybe you can you know you can message me, give me a cell number. I'll actually give. I'll send you a link that you can actually you can actually send it to all your friends, and they can be a, a part of this blessing also. Because the whole goal we gonna get the gospel out. And if I if I send it to the people I have, and I got a, I got a, a hundred of you watching me, and you all send it to at least ten of your friends, now we're reaching a thousand. Are you following? So, you know, if I don't have your, your phone number already, if you're not getting it every morning, because I send it out every morning, I download this Facebook link, I turn it into a YouTube video link, and then I send it out every morning once I get it downloaded. So if, if you're not receiving that right now, and you would like to receive it, then uh, message me your phone number that I can send it to. I'll, send, I'll put you on my list to be able to send, send out every morning, and then you will get it. You listen to it over again, a YouTube link, and then send it to as many of your friends as want. Amen. Just send it to them and let them be blessed also with it. Amen. So we're on here every morning uh, 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 on Facebook, Alfred Craig Sr. Uh, uh, on, on group. And we love you very much. And we're looking forward again to seeing you tomorrow morning at the same time. Until then, remember, the, the, he becometh poor that deal with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make it rich. Until tomorrow, this is Apostle Craig saying, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a best day. Bye-bye now.